Milling machines and the men who run them have done much to make America great. The parts they make help provide the things we need and use in every phase of our daily lives, machines of peace, things that safeguard our free way of life, machines of war. Wherever there are machines, there are shafts and gears, commonly locked together by means of a key, a key that fits snugly into matching keyways in gear and shaft, keyways often cut on a milling machine. The job starts with a blueprint, which shows that in this instance, a 5 16 by 3 16 by 3 inch keyway is to be cut in each end of a 2 inch shaft. First, the operator checks the shaft to make certain that it is the right piece for the job. The table must always be clean and free of burrs. The shaft is clamped securely to the table in the slot nearest the head of the machine. This is the simplest way to hold the work for this type of job. The tapered surfaces of both arbor and spindle must be free from grease, dirt and burrs so that they will line up perfectly and ensure accurate work. Insert the arbor into the spindle and push it solidly into place. Pull the arbor into position with a draw-in bar inserted into the spindle from the rear of the machine. Screw in the bar by hand as far as possible. Then tighten the sleeve nut with a wrench to set the arbor solidly in place. Since the keyway is to be 5 16 a 5 16 cutter is selected. Because the shaft was placed in the slot nearest the head, the cutter may also be placed close to the head and a short arbor used. All these factors ensure a rigid setup. In the complete setup, the operator has taken care to locate the overarm bracket so that it will clear the clamps holding the shaft on the table when the shaft is run in for cutting. To center the cutter for milling the keyway, locate the shaft alongside the cutter, leaving a 15 thousandth space. This can be determined with the aid of a 15 thousandths feeler. With the cutter and shaft in this position, the distance from the center of the cutter to the center of the shaft is one half the width of the cutter, five thirty seconds, or a hundred and fifty six and a quarter thousandths, plus fifteen thousandths, the thickness of the feeler, plus one inch, the radius of the shaft, or a total of one and a hundred and seventy one and one quarter thousandths inches, the distance the table must be moved in. First, lower the table so that the cutter will clear the work. Then the table can be moved in the desired distance accurately by means of the index dial on the cross feed screw. Set the index dial at zero. It is composed of 250 spaces, each of which represents a table movement of one thousandth. Since one full turn of the screw advances the table 250 thousandths or one quarter inch, it must be turned four complete revolutions plus 171 spaces to move the table the desired one and 171 thousandths. Lock the table in this position. Next, the cutter speed must be calculated before the cut can be made. The speed of the cutter in revolutions per minute can be varied by the speed selector on the machine. Three factors determine the selection of the correct speed for any job. The nature of the material to be cut, in this case, cold rolled steel. The material from which the cutter is made. 
high speed steel. The diameter of the cutter, which in this case is five inches, there is a definite relation between cutter diameter and the speed of the teeth in feet per minute. This can be easily illustrated. The distance traveled by a single tooth of a two inch cutter in one revolution is equal to the circumference of the cutter, six and 283,000. Even though both cutters revolve at the same speed, the distance traveled by a single tooth of a four inch cutter in one revolution is twice as far, since the circumference is twice as great, 12 and 566 thousandths. If both cutters rotate at 20 RPM, the number of feet that the teeth of the two inch cutter travels is 20 times six and 283 thousandths, which is 125 and 664 thousandths, or slightly under 10 and a half feet. The cutting teeth of the four inch cutter travel 20 times 12 and 566 thousandths, which is 251 and 328 thousandths, or almost 21 feet. A conservative cutting speed for cold rolled steel is 100 surface feet per minute at the teeth of a high speed cutter, the type being used on this job. The cutter is five inches in diameter, giving a circumference of five times pi, which is 15 and 708 thousandths, or about one and one third feet. The feet per minute at the cutting teeth, 100, divided by the circumference, roughly one and one third feet, equals the desired number of revolutions per minute, 76. The nearest available spindle speed settings are 74 and 92 RPM. Since a 3 sixteenths cut, the depth of the keyway is rather heavy, select the slower speed, 74. Next, the operator must determine the proper feed. Feed is the number of inches per minute that the work is fed to the cutter. For the 3 sixteenths cut, each tooth should remove a very small amount of metal. In this case, we will use a conservative chip thickness or cut per tooth of two thousandths. The number of teeth, 20, times the selected chip thickness, two thousandths, equals the distance that the work moves into the cutter in one revolution, 40 thousandths. The speed of the cutter in revolutions per minute, 74, times the distance the work moves into the cutter per revolution, 40 thousandths, equals the distance the cutter will move into the work per minute, which is nearly three inches. The nearest feed is two and three quarters, so the operator sets the dial at that point. Preparatory to milling the keyway, which is to be five sixteenths wide, three sixteenths deep, and three inches long, bring the table up by hand until the moving cutter just scrapes the shaft. Stop the machine and set the vertical feed index at zero. Now traverse the table by hand until it brings the cutter three inches along the shaft, the length of the keyway. Locate the table stop to stop the table automatically in this position. Next, run the table back to starting position for raising it to the height required for the cut. The keyway is to be 3 sixteenths deep, but milling the round shaft will cut a cord, and it is from this cord that the depth of the keyway must be determined. By means of a handbook, we learn that the thickness of metal removed down to the cord is 124 ten thousandths. Therefore, the table must be raised three sixteenths or 187 and a half thousandths plus the 124 ten thousandths thickness of the segment or a 199 and nine ten thousandths, say 200 thousandths. Since one complete revolution of the vertical feed screw equals 100 thousandths, two revolutions give us the desired movement of 200 thousandths. Lock the knee of the table in this position. The machine is now set up, ready to work. Start the machine 
and run the cut into the shaft about a quarter of an inch. Notice that the cutting edges of the teeth travel into the work. Be sure the cutter is always set to travel in this direction. After running the table back, measure the depth of the cut. The depth measures 3 sixteenths of an inch, a specification called for on the drawing. Now the keyway can be finished. After running the table back, stop the machine before doing any checking, then check the length of the keyway. Note that the reading is taken to the end of the flat and that the radius formed by the cutter in leaving the work is not considered as part of the length. Now lower the table so the cutter clears the shaft and its clamps. Then traverse the table until the right hand end of the shaft is beneath the cutter for cutting the second keyway. Raise the table to bring the shaft close to the cutter. On this end of the shaft, set the center line of the cutter three inches in from the end of the shaft, since three inches is the length of the keyway. With the cutter running, raise the table slowly until the cutter scrapes the shaft. Check the vertical index, which should be zero. Then, feeding by hand, raise the table two hundred thousandths, the depth of the cut. Throw in the table feed to finish the keyway. In this particular case, the shaft being cut has been secured by means of U-clamps with heel blocks. There are other methods of securing the shaft, with a vise, for instance, or between the centers of an indexing head. In quickly reviewing the fundamental steps for milling keyways in shafts, first, be sure the table of the machine is free of grease, dirt, and burrs. Be sure the work is rigid, tightly secured to the table. Be sure the spindle, arbor, collars, and cutter are clean and properly located to ensure a rigid and true setup. Be sure that the proper speed and feed have been selected and that the table has been set to give accurately the depth and length of cut specified. These fundamental steps govern the accurate milling of a keyway in a shaft one of many important operations performed by the milling machine operator that helped make possible this modern world in which we live.